Welcome back to Blau Dev. Today we're going to be going over how to utilize Firestore with your Flutter application. Let's get into it. So if you were with us where we last left off, we upgraded our Flutter packages um, for Fire, Firebase to incorporate the new Flutter Fire packages. And so basically a lot of things were deprecated, a lot of things were changed and improved, and we now have a new set of packages for incorporating Firebase into our Flutter application. And we're going to utilize that version of Cloud Firestore today um, for this example. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go into a new file that we're going to create. I called mine Firebase.dart. I put it in a folder called net. And I'm going to create a method called user setup. It's a future method that returns a type of void and it takes in a string value which is going to be the display name of the user that we want to store. I'm also going to want to make sure that we have our Cloud Firestore package installed as well as Firebase Auth as we also want to store the UID of the user so that we know exactly who it is that we're working with. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a collection reference and that's going to be equal to users. The name of the collection is going to be called users, hence why we're calling this collection reference users. It's just, it makes a lot more sense. And we're going to say Firebase Firestore .instance .collection users. Okay, so we've now created a collection reference which is equal to the value users. And that is going to be pointing to the collection called users in Firestore. As you can see here, I currently only have an articles collection and a videos collection. And if you're unfamiliar with the concept of collections and, art and documents, a collection is essentially a list of documents. And a document can basically store fields as seen here, um, description, image, title, URL, um, and it can store additional collections as well. And so this is a really useful way that we can store items in, in a database. And so I'm gonna create a new collection called users and it's gonna store a list of documents with each document representing a new user. And that way we can easily um, store data for a particular user, retrieve data for that user. Um, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, pretty easy to work with. So I'm gonna reference a collection called users. I'm then gonna say uh, users.add And we're going to add two values. The first one is going to be called display name. And that's going to be equal to the display name passed in. And the second value is going to be called UID. And this is going to be that identifying um, value for the user. I'll just leave it at that. Now I need to set the value of UID. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say Firebase auth. I'm just going to call it auth is equal to firebase auth.instance. Then I'm going to say string UID is equal to auth.currentuser.uid. Simple as that. And I'm going to add a two string on there for good measure, just to be sure nothing goes bad. And at the end of this method, we want to just simply return. Okay. And the reason why is because it's a void type, so it's not expecting any particular object to be returned. And so we can just say return when we're done. Um, now the reason why we can get the UID within this method is because where we're going to be calling this is actually going to be right before we move to our next screen. So the user has already been created at this point, and this method is actually also going to sign them in and therefore we can access the value of that currently signed in user and import it into, um, we can add it into our new document that we're creating. So underneath right here where we update the display name of the user um, on the auth side of things, we are going to go ahead and say um, setup, or it's called user setup. And we're going to add in username controller.txt. Okay. And one more thing to note here um, when you first set up Cloud Firestore, you do need to, by the way, set it up prior to the first time running it. It should look something a little bit like this. 
where you have a brand new screen. It'll say, it'll have some information on how it works, how to get started, what it does, and you're just gonna click the get started button, but for Cloud Firestore, not for storage, for Cloud Firestore. If you've already set it up, awesome. You can just kind of keep going ahead. And so let's go ahead and run this and test this out. Okay, so I've got the app up and running again. I'm gonna go to the register screen and we're gonna test this out. So let's say the username is, let's do John Doe. Nice and easy. gdoe at gmail.com. Just a simple password. And again, when I hit register, it should create the user, update their display name, and then call the new method that we just created. Okay, I'm into the app. You can ignore this error, that's due to bad test data. We're gonna go ahead and check out Cloud Firestore. Give it a refresh. You can see here, we now have a user's collection. And we have a display name of John Doe, and we have a UID that starts with 7ZJ. So let's check out authentication. J Doe, 7ZJ. So that worked. And so it's as simple as that. You know, you all you have to do, going back, you establish the reference to the collection that you want to work with. You then only have to say that collection reference dot add, and then this will create a brand new document for you. It's as simple as that really clean, really easy. This is why I love working with Firebase. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or you can email me at blaudev at gmail.com. I'm always more than happy to help with specific questions relating to your code. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for weekly Flutter content. If you're also not aware, um, we've started a new Flutter monthly newsletter. It's called Flutter Digest. You can find it on Medium, completely free, doesn't cost you a thing. Not a hassle, it'll send it to your email. If you wanna stop getting the email, you can always unsubscribe. Um, but we basically highlight statistics, news, um, community contributions with new packages and such. Um, we highlight all of the biggest headlines from the month um, for Flutter. And we do that once a month, typically in about the middle of the month. And so if you're interested in that sort of thing, be sure to go ahead and subscribe to that newsletter. Again, that's Flutter Digest. I'll put a link below. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.